I don't really know where that came from. It could be like because my dad, when he was when I was like twelve or thirteen, he like decided to become like a like a spirit kind of cleaner, like a Ghostbuster, I guess. So he would like clean, like mm. get rid of ghosts from like mm. houses and businesses and stuff. But it's strange because he do, he did it from like a like an anthropological point of view because he was always very interested in folklore and like oral histories of places. So he w wasn't necessarily from a religious point of view, he was just very interested in what happened mm. somewhere before, what events took place mm. and why people were still feeling the effect of an event mm. that took place, like maybe like weird energy or something that still affected their lives this day. Mm. So. It kind of ties into a little bit of like this like in between state of like maybe it's a ghost or I don't know a soul mm. or something, but I think like that's what I always find interesting too is because that aspect in Vietnam is still very strong about mm. how there's always a presence of either relatives or events that happened somewhere else before, and the same in Ireland mm. people take it like quite seriously about like things that happened somewhere else or like certain land that shouldn't be touched because of historically or culturally something. So I think that does inform my work to a degree of like an investigating kind of in between states of being. And I never really, I always just considered painting to be painting. Mm -hmm. Not that like it has like a fixed set of rules to it, that like it needs to be on a particular surface or it needs to be on something. Painting is like a very fluid thing. So part of like my practice, I guess, is this, what well, I think that painting should be any, everywhere or it can yeah. be anything. Mm. It can exist in like my reality, I guess. Mm. Like it exists and is directly affected and affects where it is. So it kind of, it's there to disrupt in a way mm the areas that it is in. It makes you think differently mm. about what the architecture or the space could be and how it's viewed. Mm. Yeah. Like if it goes away, it goes away. Like yeah. nothing stays mm. forever anyway. Mm. So, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of part of it is that, that it's like an ephemeral thing. Mm. So it's public, but it has its own lifespan. Mm as opposed to another work that might be more conserved. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the people may only s see it for a very short amount of time mm -hmm. and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a strange mix between something that's very public but very private at the same time. Yeah. I see the figure you use in most of your paintings mm. are very um, identical. Yeah. And I keep guessing about that all the time. <laughs> and people sometimes see it as a, a body, sometimes mm. see it as an animal, mm. or sometimes see it as a part of something. So can you tell us more about that figure? Yeah, I think the way I look at it, as in, I kind of see it as a, um, almost like a universal form. So it's in the same way that you have like, I don't know, symbols mm. that can be like, you know, like a circle or something that mm. could be seen as having been like a, you know, something that has like a cycle to it. Mm. I kind of see these as being forms that have something similar to it. So for me, they signify like something being born, something dying, mm. a kind of cycle process ah, to it. I see. But over like the years, I've like found kind of similar forms in like some like prehistoric art, and then even in like string theory, mm. there's like shapes that are like very very similar to it. Mm. So it's not that it's not particularly unique, mm -hmm. but it's something that does connect through different times, I guess. Mm. Like a, something that seems oddly. Um, ancient, I guess, mm -hmm. but also feels like it could have come from the future. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to connect those things, trying to bridge a gap between 
time and dimension, I guess. Something that is ambiguous, but also is very, very clear. So it can't really be denied. Mm. You have to look at it. Mm. But so in a way, it kind of like is something that like seduces you. But mm. again, it could be seen as a body part, which is also horrific. <laughs> so it's like, it's, I suppose I'm trying to, I'm interested in like a, what a presence mm. of a painting can be. Yeah. And how do you define mm. what a presence is? Mm. So it's, that's why I like painting it like in the street and stuff like that, because mm. its presence is different mm. when it's outside than it is if it's inside. Are your works uh, separate as individual artworks or they are all together uh, expanding or multiplying in one theme, in one work? The way I kind of look at it is that it's one singular work mm. and everything I do is just fragments of it. Mm. So in the same way that it's kind of trying to like think about like what a work can be, I guess, for myself. In the same way that like, sometimes we think about like time as being like a linear thing, mm. but time is different to that. It's like our own construct of it. So we just try to make it mm. in a way that makes sense to us. But mm. in reality, yeah. it works in a far different way. It's everything is happening all at once. So the way I kind of view my work is that it's all one work that's happening all at once, but it's fragments that either appear or disappear depending on the environment that it's in. Mm -hmm. But I want to put it in my own reality, I guess, and mm -hmm. so it can exist in its own reality. Mm -hmm. So it's not, in a way, it's like trying to combine the past, the present and the future mm -hmm. all together. Anyone. That's great. How do you see a Vietnamese community, the Vietnamese uh, art lovers receive your works and appreciate your works? Yeah, no, I think uh, the Vietnamese, like, uh, like our community is like mm. very, very supportive. Mm. They're like, it's a, it's a very like small, but very like deep community of yeah. like very, very like good artists. Mm -hmm. like. I don't know, like even like all like my artists who are like friends or like artists that I worked with or whatever, are all like, you know, some of my favorite artists as well working. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a real privilege to be like, actually around people that kind of like um, raise the level, because you have to like the, like because Vietnamese like you know they challenge you mm -hmm. on like <laughs> on like what your your way of like mm -hmm. why you're doing things and. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be challenged rather than just let something slide because yeah so like yeah no it's very you know they keep you on your toes for sure mm -hmm. which is like very beneficial to me because mm -hmm. I think before I would have made paintings and then almost reverse engineered and then tried to figure out why I made such things mm -hmm. but now not that I necessarily think of the concept first, but I think of like the general philosophy and idea that I, I kind of want to get across with it mm -hmm. first and then try make as much work as I can around this idea and then mm -hmm. figure, then investigate it more. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, yeah, it's a different way of looking at it really, but mm -hmm. I think that has developed over my time here for sure. Mm -hmm. So what works are you working on right now? These are like studies for some larger works I'm going to do. Mm. I was just going through um, lots of these like medieval and Renaissance paintings and like mm -hmm. stock photos that exist. If you're like on your phone or like online every day, you're gonna get overloaded with these like images. Okay. And you don't really know like where they came from mm -hmm. or like I would see so many of these images that I know the scenes, but I don't necessarily know the events that happened there or like the artist that made them, mm. but I know they're from like a different time. So then I started investigating or like researching about like the stories behind each work 
and then the art is behind it and then so for these ones it's kind of a, a way of just imposing my works onto them and a way to kind of a uh, give way to the idea of them existing somewhere else in like another time. Mm -hmm. The next work that will be like the continue of this is that I'll uh, I'm going to like do a prints of these on plexiglass, but then paint over them. But I'll be doing like a photoshopping paintings mm -hmm. that I painted in this outside, mm -hmm. but don't e exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but I have photos of them. So I'm taking them and I'm putting them back into old buildings mm -hmm. <laughs> and then painting back over them. So it's kind of like a, a process of like, a, yeah, different layers of time. Mm -hmm. So ones that are all possible parallel timelines that mm -hmm. could have existed. Mm -hmm. So maybe this work mm -hmm. did come from another time. Mm 